morning, Think Tech. <laughs> Good morning, Hawaii. Good morning, Jim Walters. Good morning, Community Matters with Jim Walters. Hi, Jim. Hey, how are you doing, Jay? Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, thanks for coming around. I know Jim for about 30 years. Um, he's been running Hawaii Building Maintenance for about, what, 200 years now. <laughs> Seems uh, but it, it doesn't show yet, Jim. Well, that's because I've got a I've got a son that's now the president and does the chief operating work. Yes, yeah, it's about time. Yeah, go. Finally so, got Jim, Hawaii Building Maintenance is, uh, in my recollection, the biggest maintenance building maintenance company in town, and that means that means you are dealing with a whole bunch of office buildings and other properties uh, to keep them clean. Can you tell us how a building maintenance company works? One like yours, as far as in the COVID or just regular? Regular. Okay. Well, our company uh, provides several services, one being the janitorial day porter services, the night cleaning. We also have about a, uh, 200 people on staff that are in our uh, building engineering department that operate the, uh, the, the actual physical properties themselves as far as the equipment. Uh, we also have an HVAC uh, chiller operation that comes in and, and establishes and installs high-rise uh, uh, equipment for our customers. You say that like it was uh, so ordinary and routine, but it's not ordinary and routine, is it? Well, no, I don't think so. That was uh, 25 years ago, we were looking at how to diversify just being a janitorial company at that time when I when I came. As you can tell, I'm, my accent's from South Kona. So <laughs> <laughs> when, when I came. All these years, I thought it was South Hilo. <laughs> when I came, we were known as the uh, largest, but not the best. But uh, janitorial and window cleaning were our primary uh, things that we did then. And then in uh, 1995, uh, started the uh, building engineering division. And that uh, has grown uh, exponentially uh, since then. Uh, it's always a big challenge is, is just finding technicians and, and technical staff. But we have a lot of good, smart people on board. Yeah, and um, it, it sounds like you've been very innovative over the years. When you've seen problems and opportunities, you've, you've gone there and, uh, and it's all connected anyway, right? Building maintenance is actually connected with everything that happens in the building. So it's a natural transition to go out of you know janitorial services uh, into equipment and maintenance of, um, well, everything in the building. Huh? Well, I, I'll have to uh, give the economy credit for that because every time there's been a nosedive, uh, we've looked at how to add other services and broaden our base. And uh, so that's, we've been very fortunate from that perspective, um, from a service yeah. basis. So um, I don't wanna pin you down to exact numbers, but say the end of December, how many people in total at Hawaii Building Maintenance, uh, Hawaiian Building Maintenance? It must be quite a few hundreds, maybe? Yeah, seven hundred, seven hundred and something, yeah. Seven hundred. Yeah. And most of them are still deployed in the, um, the janitorial service? Right, there has been some reductions in staff. Uh, we do a tremendous amount of retail. I think we have probably close to 40 retail centers that we take care of in the state. So oh, I, I, let's talk about it. What is retail? I mean, can I buy a widget there? Uh, you can get food. Now you can get some widgets, but uh, there was a period of time where all you could get was food or alcohol so, from the same place. So, it was like a sundry thing then. Yeah. So, you know, we had to, we've had reductions in staff because of that. We still perform services, but mm -hmm. common area maintenance part. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's, let's, let's go to COVID now for a minute, because, you know, we start out with the proposition that COVID has um, changed our lives, all of us, no exceptions. And COVID has changed our business lives, all of us, no exceptions. And, uh, you know, the more staff you have, 700 people, that's, that's enough to change a lot of lives. So uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, the whole thing sounds like it's a real, it's a real threat for you. Um, a lot of the um, tenants in the downtown area, at least for the past few months, have, have shut down. They're, they're not in their offices. Some of them are coming back now, but a lot of them went home. Um, and so it's really, really quiet downtown. I've been there, not often. I've been there and I've, I've seen, you know, the parking lots are essentially empty. 
And in most of the, the, uh, the security people are the largest single contingent <laughs> in any of those buildings. Um, the tenants are gone, the offices are closed and locked, uh, they're not there. So, you know, one would, one would assume there's no need for building maintenance or janitorial services, am I right? Well, we have the essentials. Uh, there's essential businesses that's been operating and some of those that supply services for them. Uh, but you still have to have common area, high touch, disinfected cleaning. So no matter whether you have uh, one tenant in the building, you still have to make sure the elevator or elevators, uh, all the all the, the touch points are disinfected on an hourly basis. Hourly? Yeah. Wow. So that's what we've tried to do. And each one of our customers has, has helped us develop that we developed a model to fit their own particular needs. Mm-hmm. And so our whole objective now is is training, education, and getting the proper uh, chemicals and supplies in. That was a real problem. Wasn't beginning. available. No, face mask was a big concern. Uh, we had 10,000 coming in, but didn't make it. There's a lot of stories like that, but fortunately we were able to, I think we procured something like uh, 8,000 masks so that each one of our employees could have a minimum of three a mask to change out and allow for time for disinfecting. Uh, so we supply that for all of our employees. They don't bring their own mask, we supply them. Oh, that's great. Okay, so um, different profile, different um, procedure, protocol for each building, but it's all around what? Elevators, public spaces, uh, high touch surfaces. Um, and I would imagine uh, there's a lot of that in office buildings. And, yep. and the, uh, the protocol would be they would go around at certain intervals, established intervals, like in the elevators. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they would go once an hour and, and they would take disinfectant. And what kind of disinfectant? I'm asking because, you know, I, I really want to know how the professionals do this. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd, I'd have to have a contract with you, Jay, first of all, to develop <laughs> that confidential information. So. <laughs> a non compete. I knew we were going to have fun on this show, Jim. We always do. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we spent a we spent a large amount of time, and that's one thing about having an intelligent staff. It's helped me a lot to look better, uh, it, <laughs> to do research and things of the nature. Plus, my son's pretty smart, uh, so we've done a lot of research. A lot. Jared, of- he was on the show last year. Jared. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sure yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, you know, used to I was, he was known as Jim's son. Today I'm known as Jared's father. So see, so see what change. happens. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what we've done, you know, from an operational management and a safety basis, because we have our own in-house safety department uh, that goes around, does inspections, audits, training, etc. Uh, we've taken educational classes over these last several months and even before then with uh, BSCAI, uh, the IICRC, which these are all acronyms for different organizations that relate to training OSHA and then many more. So we've taken those and developed property resources uh, for safe operation. Mm -hmm. We're hoping by doing that, the objective is to help the customers develop individual plans for their facilities, which we've been successful so far in doing. Um, Zoom has become an integral part of how we operate. All of our managers have, of course, smartphones. Uh, they're all connected and a lot of them also we have uh, ipads and, and laptops for them to operate with but uh so we had training for example uh last wednesday of the month and in that training we had 72 of our manager supervisors on that particular zoom training which we do that once a month and uh, out of that you know we've been able to develop strong relationships also with our insurance carrier mm-hmm. and uh, we do We've continued to do safety audits with them and inspections, but because of social distancing, now everything we operate is web-based. So we can actually walk through a facility. Uh, Our insurance carrier can be in their office. We can be in ours and our on-site manager is able to walk around with the camera, show, look and discuss and find any discrepancies that are there to be corrected. So, you know, we spend a lot of time doing that and, uh, I'll have to give credit to our, our leadership team. They devoted a lot of hours and time. It's been very stressful. Nothing's any worse than having to let someone go home. 
Well, let's talk about that. You have these hundreds of people, and now you have uh, in, in, in the shutdown, the lockdown, you had a, a serious uh, reduction in the number of tenants who were actually there right. in, this, in the buildings. Um, so what did you do with all the staff? Did you have to furlough them, terminate them? What did you do? Well, right now, we probably have, uh, uh, have let 80 people go home. You know, we continue for those who have benefits to be able to provide benefits for them under this process. Uh, we were not eligible for the, P, uh, the PPP program uh, through the federal government because of uh, too many employees. Uh, so that, that offered a little bit of a challenge for us. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, you know, we still are bringing people back in gra uh, gradually. But now it looks like we may be going backwards a little bit. So we'll see what happens. It's a day-to-day, it's a -day, week-to-week situation. And all those employees that have gone home, uh, they're on call and ready to come back. So we keep in contact with them and making sure that if, if we have an opening, we bring them in. Because we have also started up some new accounts since the COVID started. Uh, have they the ones at home? They've been uh, they've been living on uh, unemployment insurance. Yep. Oh, it's a tough it's a tough situation. You know, yeah. but one thing that strikes me is uh, that you know you learn by this experience, and some people say we'll have COVID or something else on on for years to come, maybe forever. And and the, you know the point I make is that you're sensitive to the needs of your clientele to those buildings, and those buildings are sensitive. Um, to the needs of their tenants. Um, so you, you know, you're like directly connected somehow to the economy right. itself. Right. And when the economy is dropping or, or the governor decides he wants to lock down, you're affected. When the, gov when the governor says, well, it's doing better now, we're gonna reopen, you're affected with that. And you have to be totally flexible about this. It's rack and pinion. If it's going down, your staff has to go down. If it's going up, your staff has to go up. You have to have the flexibility of doing that. This is okay. not the case before. Before you could plan, <laughs> you know, you, yeah. you got you get some idea about where you were going, but now it can happen anytime. <laughs> yeah, we plan on making a new plan anytime. Yeah. So that's about the only planning that we can do right now. But what we've done too is we've been able to, as we went through the supply chain issue in the beginning, I think most people on the island did. Yeah. We all know everything only comes in by ship. Yeah. Uh, so we were able to get, I'm sorry. You use a lot of supplies. So this right. is not a small thing. You can't go down to longs and and, and stock up. You, you need gallons well, we, and gallons we, and tons. Of yeah, stuff. we have an exclusive product that we use called the Virox for most of our office cleaning. And it's a peroxide base. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, green, all those other things. So that's a big deal with our chemicals. Uh, the biggest ones had to do with trying to get the proper disinfectants. As you know, no one can guarantee if they do, they're going to be sued that they can kill COVID-19, right? So we have a new, uh, a new product that we have on a boat right now coming in. And uh, it's a, what do they call that? Micro, micro, microbial. Microbial. There you go. Thank you, sir. So with that, it, they have a 30 day lifetime. So when we go into an office, we can, we can apply this. This is going to be a certification cleaning that we're going to start. That's a, able to certify for the employees and for the customer, the tenant themselves, that they have been uh, disinfected. It doesn't guarantee anything, but it does stay on the surfaces for 30 days. So, you know, that is so funny. Only a few days ago, we had an interview with a woman from uh, Pro Service, you must be familiar with them. You know, oh, staff, absolutely. We, staffing we, company. Yeah. We entertain business. ideas all the time with Pro Service. Yeah. And one of the points of discussion was, uh, you know, that the public needs to have confidence. And certainly, if you're in the business to business realm, your clients have to have confidence. And so there will come a time, just as the Department of Health initiated uh, three, four years ago with, um, you know, their, their pass fail signs you see, you used to see in all the restaurants. Right. Um, so there should be a certification procedure here. And again, you're ahead of me, Jim, uh, yeah, a certification system. So you not only certify, you know, this or that, you certify it for other companies too, and for buildings and firms and whatnot. And you're right. able to say, you know, that, uh, you know, that uh, the best uh, steps were taken here. And so you can certify 
you know, within limits, as you say, yeah. can't guarantee, but this will be a, an additional, additional service. I mean, they'll have a base. The base services are covered through their through their leases, as you know. Mm -hmm. But this would be so that if someone wanted to go on a twelve month program, because we don't know how long this is going to last, and uh, so that would allow them to be serviced. Because we also have hazmat suits. We we bought a ton of hazmat suits, just so because at one point you couldn't find them. So everything we couldn't find, we now have at our new warehouse, at our new building. Ah. So, so we're prepared. Uh, you know, the challenge though is really it's it's stressful for our employees, uh, and it's stressful for everyone right now. And but our guys are the frontline folks, and I hope out of that there'll be some larger appreciation for the folks that come in and dump your trash or sometimes miss your trash. Uh, that. You know, they're the ones that are there putting their lives at risk every day. So the training aspect of everything we do and the supervision is is totally critical right now. Well, I could see a couple of things where there would be risk for them. Number one is they're touching surfaces, presumably in the in the office space. Yeah. And they don't really know who's been there. They don't know if somebody's been there that might have thrown droplets on that surface or touched right. that surface. Uh, so they have to be careful what surfaces they touch. There's a risk there. Um, and, um, I suppose they wear gloves. Um, well, you know, that's how you a, had to deal with that. That's a good question because, you know, there's, there's two views of that. You know, it looks good that if you have the glove on, right, it looks mm -hmm. like you're being safe mm -hmm. Well, you touch something that has COVID on it. Where does that go? It stays on the glove. Yeah. So my concern has been that like when you get food service, you know, I know by law, they have to have gloves. When somebody serves you or hands you something with a glove on, what are they giving you? They're protected, but are you protected? So I think we have a lot to still learn about this. And so we, we're, we're utilizing the gloves uh, in, in most cases. Yeah. Uh, we have sanitizers for all the employees to be able to sanitize. Yeah. yeah. And hand washing would be, uh, yeah, that's you know, probably so the best. That's a, that's the, that's the best thing because uh, the gloves gives you a false sense of security. And I know, uh, I saw a video when they used, you know, some type of a, a chemical that whenever they put it on and showed them when they got through doing something, how much of whatever they touched was on their body then. Uh, so they have, they have a way, they have a way of emulating how the virus works. And they exactly. can show that under ultraviolet light or something. Yeah. Uh, have you have you thought about ultraviolet light? By the way, you know, DBED yeah, last week DBED had a webinar about it, yeah. uh, and they brought in this uh, expert, of course, uh, uh, by remote from New York, and he's uh, talking about the various products that are out there, mostly right. cu customarily for um, hospitals. But uh, the idea is they're they're trying to uh, uh, deploy them into hotels now. So the tourists, uh, you know, people who stay at the hotels can feel that every, you know, possible step has been taken. You were going to say? Um, I was going to say that we, you know, we also do LED installs and, and represent LEDs for a lot of our, lot of our customers. Mm -hmm. And so we're now working with or talking to a company that has the, uh, LED, the LEDs or the fluorescent lights actually are UV lights uh, to be able to put into office spaces. Uh, so that's one avenue we're looking at. We're also looking at some of the new ones that you can set in a room uh, and overnight we'll do the disinfectant. The only problem is with that, you can't be in that room at the same time. You have to be out of there. So those are things that my son is working with right now, along with his team and our safety director and his folks. Yeah. The other thing with the, uh, the staff is, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's physical work. Um, and uh, uh, they're wearing masks, of course, but they're still close to other people, I guess. I, I mean, have you, have you set up systems on um, social distancing among them so they don't get too close? That's been probably the biggest challenge uh, is making sure that everybody's giving each other space because uh, a lot of our employees come from the same community and uh, it's not, they're not really thinking about that at the time. So we're continually working with them. I think, and, and plus we have what's called section cleaning where you have responsibilities for one person to do one thing. Uh, so we try not to over overbear them with people on top of them. Yeah, right, I can see. Um, so, you know, there, there have to be lessons here. I just, I can imagine uh, there have to be lessons that you are learning now in, in the COVID time. 
uh, that are are so efficient and helpful that you would continue them uh, on into the future. Whether the future is a ripple effect of COVID or or whether we can somehow get back to a reasonable existence together. What what kinds of things have you learned you think you might, assuming you can tell me, Jim, you know I mean? I know if it's proprietary, just, just tell me <laughs> to leave you alone. But what kinds of things do you think will you, you know go on forward into the future? Well, I think the, the uh, you know, the high touch areas are gonna be probably a concern going forward uh, with everyone. Uh, so that is one in particular along with, I think, the certification program, because uh, this, this is not going away soon. Uh, it's getting too much news and too much uh, exposure for everyone we know that is here. So we know that those areas are gonna be a continuation. And again, hopefully that mutates itself out and we don't have to worry about that in another year. But we're planning right now for the future as though it is what it is today. Uh, yeah. It could be another outbreak tomorrow. Yeah, got to do that. Uh, and you're in a you're in a position where you can see a broader picture. So you're, you know, you're you're at the fifty thousand foot level in terms of the way these office buildings work and the way the businesses in them work. So you can make hopefully you can make a reasonable plan that way. It's really important to be yeah. at that level. Well, the biggest challenge I think for us is <clears throat> going through the the due diligence aspect of it, because we know that whatever we bring in or whatever we do. Uh, can either be a real positive for us or a real negative. And so there are a lot of scrutiny and we've delayed time on accepting some products until we have full disclosure and have done our complete due diligence on them. Uh, That's great. It must be, you know, it must be gratifying actually to be in a place where you can see clearly or at least reasonably clearly what's happening, how things are changing. And then you have the ability, which isn't easy, you know, to, to be nimble about it and uh, develop new systems. Thank goodness for Jared, right? Uh, no, no, exactly. <laughs> uh, I, no, I'm his father. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, oh you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> so talk about your uh, new building in Kaka'ako. That was in Pacific Business News a few days ago, and i just like to know how, how that went down. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. We've been doing a search for the last three or four years, trying to find something that met our needs, reasonable price, location. As you know, in the industrial area, that's a real challenge. Uh, so we were fortunate because we had a good broker that was willing to make some cold calls uh, because we were looking, we finally realized we had to find something off market. So that's how this building came about was an off market deal. So what, what kind of building were you looking for? I mean, you know, because all those employees, all the janitorial staff, the engineering staff, do they need to be in one place? No. Uh, or they, okay, they can be home and come in, go directly to work and then go home again. Yeah, yeah we don't really, uh, we don't really hold anything from the janitorial side in our warehouse to it's shipped directly to the job sites. So we don't keep inventory on that, except for now with COVID, we have inventory of different things that we didn't have before. Mm. Uh, from disinfectants and the hazmat suits and, you know, all those other things that go with making sure we're keeping our people protected. So what do you put in the building? Well, because of the fact we have a construction uh, division that also uh, takes care of HVAC and does some light construction, we have a, at a warehouse in Sand Island. Ah. So I don't, I never liked that because we had to have it somewhere. It's kind of hard to have it at Bishop Square. And I don't know why they wouldn't give me part of the parking garage to utilize, but. Oh, sure, right. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, the, 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 the vision we had was to be able to put all of our services together. One, you can't watch what's going on with your equipment or your supplies. And two, you're just, you're disjointed. So now we're together to some degree because we've even have, a, we've had to reduce our time in the office. We've been doing a lot of work from home and we've also kept a schedule in the office to make sure that everybody is socially distant. Mm-hmm. So, you know, every week a new schedule goes out. Maybe you're in on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or maybe you're in on Tuesday, Wednesday. So these are the things that we've been incorporating. Uh, it hasn't been me, it's been our team there. They've done a great job and, and trying to make sure that everybody's comfortable and uh, that everybody is safe. Well, you know, in your kind of businesses, so much of it is human resources. 
really yeah. so much of it and you've got to, you got to treat them right you got to be aware of their needs um you got to make a, a good environment for them all that stuff and i think that's key to your success i know you've always been good to your people and um that's why you've been successful so so this building um are you using it all now in the time of COVID? Right. are you right. growing we're into in, it we're in april 1st actually we barely got in uh, you know, we were concerned we couldn't get the movers to even move us if that ended up happening with the essential workers. Mm -hmm. So we were very fortunate. We got everything moved in. We, you know, it's like anything else. You still, uh, we still have some spots that's got to be maybe touched on and things of that nature. But uh, we put a lot of lipstick on our cockaco pig. I guess you could say. <laughs> so, we're very, we're very happy with it because we've got parking, and we're not having to pay for parking now. And uh, that was a huge, a huge expense that we had downtown. And we love downtown. I miss it. Yeah. Fact, I still go down uh, to see my, my buddies uh, to have some coffee occasionally there at the coffee shop. The I, shop. I would say you should come down and see me, except I'm not downtown. I, <laughs> I know. Mean, I kept looking for you. Where's <laughs> Jay? <laughs> He's buying masks for his fish. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, this is a new it's a new thing you know my first reaction would have been gee kakaako is actually where where the you know the city is uh is evolving to there's all these buildings down there except except their condos jim uh, right. i don't want to tell you anything you don't know about condos the question i really want to ask you here is why not do covid in condos there's people around that would just love to see your smiling face and and have you disinfect their condos because they don't really know how well with, that's a part of our, our market that we're looking at right now because we do you know about seven or eight large condominium projects and we're pretty particular on you know condominiums because it's a challenging market uh you've got you know 500 customers and then you've got a board so uh we have offered that services and we'll continue to offer those services. We're doing the common area touch points, but yeah, it just depends. I think there is a market there. We haven't tried to exploit it. We just want to make sure people are communicated to, to know what's available. Uh, well, there's a lot of exploitation that's going on right now. Oh, in tell me. Industry, in my industry. Uh, oh, in your industry. Uh, what, 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 what do people do to ex exploit the situation? overcharge fear factors uh make promises that probably if uh, they had a uh, had an attorney listening would go this is they're licking my chops because this is a great lawsuit <laughs> uh, my oldest son is uh, in oklahoma and he's in the same industry and business i'm in and part of what he's been doing too is uh you know being able to spray with his hazmat suit on to do the disinfectant in offices and he said that there, the people were charging $2,500 for every 10,000 square feet. And, but he figured out the cost and he's charging 250 uh, because there's gouging going on everywhere. Yeah. It's kind of like being in Florida when you have a hurricane, you have all kinds of people show up that can fix your roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's COVID, always COVID brings them out. I mean, uh, you know, I'm familiar with the, the tech side of things and all the people who do scams on the on the internet. And exactly. There are a huge body of people and it seems like it's growing and the number of scams are growing. They, they see the opportunity, yeah. they move right in. It's really, you know, you like to think that people come together and they're kind to their fellow human being in a time of crisis. That isn't necessarily true, I'm sorry to say. We're old enough now to know that we've experienced that that is not true. Yeah. <laughs> Those folks out there. Yeah. So what do you see for the future? You know, everybody says this is an inflection point. Indeed it is, uh, you know, COVID creates new ideas and innovations, new challenges uh, and inflections where, you know, a company like yours right. can see a lot of challenges, a lot of risks out there, but you can also see if you can, the way the community is going to develop in the future. That's why I think that, you know, the Kaka'ako move was really smart, whether you realize it or not at the time you committed to that. It just happened to work out, I think, yeah. serendipitously. Thank um, you. So where where now? Where do you see, the, you know, where are you going? You, you've done so well, um, but now it's an inflection point. Well, it's, you know, it's another time of opportunity. Anytime, like I said, there's a downturn, it always motivates us to look at how do we now find new services to offer 
how to expand that base of operations we have because we don't know what the commercial business is going to look like in the future. People are learning and folks I've talked to that are tenants, you know, they're, most of their staff is uh, working from the house. Uh, so I think you're going to see a, a lot of folks having a small office conference room and they come in for meetings or interviews uh, within those facilities like that. So I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, so that's, it's got some sadness to it, but it's a reality. You know, it's some people talked about this 15 years ago. Uh, it just took to have uh, something like this happen uh, to force us to take a look at how we can operate differently. Uh, so, Jim, it's great to talk to you. It's great to com you. compare notes and, and reconnect. I, I, I'm going to look for you. I'm going to find you downtown. Don't, don't leave town. I'll be looking for you. Well, I can't, I can't get off <laughs> island anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Then we could have coffee. <laughs> yeah, I would love to. Have been mind, Jay. I appreciate the time and thanks for uh, calling me on this. Yeah. Jim Walters, the uh, CEO of Hawaiian Building Maintenance, uh, a company that uh, has been an essential part of the Bishop Street community for years and decades, and now maybe other neighborhoods too. Thank you so much, Jim. Hey, thank you, Jay. Aloha. Aloha.